In the previous video, I inadvertently caused eBay's entire stock of used Tina 2 3D printers to go extinct overnight. One day later, I've used my insomniatic energy to strategize a complete upgrade of almost every weak link in these printers so as to turn them into unsolvable machines of creation magic. I've only had two hours of sleep. In today's video, I bring these printers up a notch. I print with previously impossible filaments. I use my incandescent creativity to get a heated build plate, and I reinvent our entire understanding of filament management. So it's the next morning, and I managed to get seven hours of sleep, so now I'm just tired instead of insomniatic. But over my weird day of experimenting with these 3D printers, I got them to print reliably. At least the, the one that I have at the moment, because I'm saving the other one for the third video where we have to replace some parts. So, first of all, they're now printing perfectly fine. I'm coming close. And I ran a few of these prints without any issue. And bed is sticking properly. I've designed these also with fairly good tolerances. But we'll talk about that later. It's funny, as my viewers were commenting, and that video kind of blew up, as my, video, my viewers were commenting, I was discovering the things in tandem with them. For instance, the automatic bed leveling, it sees through this because I believe it has a like magnetic sensor instead of, because it, it, it detects the, the plate underneath it apparently, or it doesn't work. But either way, I can use the ender pads just by taking the Z offset and dialing it back. But the first thing that was important is that because the drive shafts for these stepper motors for the Z axis are lower than the actual device itself, I had to make a little, little feet. I decided I might as well go ahead and try. I'm kind of surprised it came out so well, but I'm, I am an expert at 3D modeling. I decided to go ahead and try tackling that very difficult glass purple filament that I got. Now this first one didn't quite go so well. So then, actually I'll get one of the later ones. I got it really dialed in. Going with thick layer heights so that going with thick layer heights so that it's more glassy and changing the temperatures and such and the, the run speeds. I have now switched this entire device to running about as slow as it can go, but setting all the settings to 30 millimeters per second seems to really bring out the quality. And that just hooks in like so. So, you know, what we're going to do is we're going to remove this. Finally. <laughs> Let that warm up. I'm glad I brought this back from the makerspace because this filament is on a plastic reel that can just slide. Of course, it did also run off the table once. And, but, but I was able just to have it there while I made the filament holder solution. But just because I want to show the feet off first, let's make a few feet for the other printer because I would like to print four more. They take about 15 minutes to print. And once this gets up to temperature, we can remove it. And I did check the printer does accurately keep the height to where it just, you can feel it with a piece of paper and it does accurately keep the height. So it does seem like either the beds are perfectly level by nature or the bed leveling is working.
Okay. Now I do need to put the old file back on this. So I loaded the custom Cura profile. And I have this along with everything else on my Thingiverse account. And in order to slice it properly, I went with 0.3 millimeter layer height and speed. I put everything 35 or 30. I've been experimenting with 35, but I did these at 30 millimeters per second. I, I just brought all the speeds down because they were just going too fast. And it's really helped a lot. Now I'm gonna stick with my other print because I had it dialed in specifically for this plastic because it requires 190 degrees Celsius. Now the other secret is that the only reason the previous video had any lighting at all is because I just got these lights and they have, I believe they're halogen bulbs in them. Yes, Third, uh, 50 watt halogen bulbs and they produce a tremendous amount of heat. So I thought, well, how at first I was even boiling water, but then as soon as I got it boiling, I decided, wait a minute, I have a bright light. So I shine it on there and it was quite a comical situation before, but I allow it to heat up for a little bit. It takes a little while. I even put it on a tripod so that it would hold it there automatically. I think I'm going to have to let it sit for a little, quite a long time though because this needs to get up to about 60 degrees Celsius. So to print these feet yet again, I'm going to have to sit here. Sometimes with, with this filament because it's, it's a real pain, so I have to get, I already had to try it once of course and it just didn't stick. But by the time I let it set up yet again, the, the heat from the light has reached the point where this is quite warm. I would say around 50 degrees Celsius, 45 degrees Celsius, which is the absolute mini minimum that this filament takes. It's a real pain to work with. Um, yeah, it's just not even working. Yeah, it's still pretty. Fine, I'll go down a little more. Okay, so we went down another 0.1 of a millimeter. Okay, so you just have to... I hate how the uh, onboard computer fails. What the fuck is going on? Okay. This glass purple is a real pain to print with. How did I get it to work before? Had to work four times. Yeah, I know, and I wasn't even heating it after a bit. I was using the other pad though, so. <laughs> it's going. <laughs> you know, just stop. Just, just stop. So I switched it back to the original build plate and it liked that far, far better. So it's interesting how different textures lend themselves well to different filaments. For instance, the white filament, it really likes the Ender 5 build plate, but oh well. And now it's plenty warm so I can turn off this hot light. It should take about 15 minutes to print.
this one started coming up a little bit. <laughs> Hard to do this one-handed. Give it a little more light and we're almost done. Only taking about 15 minutes to print these. I realized that this was before I really lowered the print speed. This was the print that made me want to lower the print speed because I like the parts where I was running only like under 30 meters per second. Oh, and the reason that was 35 millimeters per second or 30 meters per second, 35 millimeters per second. I said 30 meters per second. That's like a rocket. Um, <laughs> Uh, the reason that was at 35 millimeters is because I was experimenting with that, but I didn't actually print with that. So these, some of the fast parts, it's actually, I don't, I still don't know if that's infrared. So I'm still, I'm not going to point an infrared source at it. I don't think it's an infrared source. I think it's magnetic, but, um, just kinda, okay. Yeah. So it's holding the heat pretty well. And then we can switch off from this. Right, so right now with this print, sometimes, especially with the infill, you see all the little bits and bobs on there. So it prints up to 65, I think, or 60 millimeters per second. And this is just the preset that I found on a forum post. This one might fail. Uh, I don't know. Hmm, it's not looking right. We'll see if we can salvage it. I'm getting excited because then we can move on from this. For this purple filament, I probably will continue to print with a skirt such as this because it's just a little bit too much of a pain. But if I went with the other filament, which doesn't need a heated bed and has, doesn't have adhesion issues, I would just go straight onto it. This filament also has an issue of being very stringy. It, it's always coming out of the extruder. And so there's always like, it cannot turn off the extruder. It's always having lines between surfaces and stuff, and that shows up in the print. But that's that's not an issue with the printer. It's an issue with this filament. It's just a really weird... It's like printing with a PET, effectively. Oh, pretty nice. It'll be great for crystals. The one thing I bought it for and have not used it for. I went ahead and took the chance to remove the filament while it was finished and fine. I'm going to start working to preserve this print surface because I don't like whenever, just like this, you print too much in the middle of the build plate and you ruin that and you don't use up all of the build plate. So we switched over to the white filament, which is much easier to print with. And we are printing the spool holder solution that I've made.
excited about these. So this one doesn't require hardly any heat. And this is just normal PLA. It's honestly quite content to, to print without a heated bed. I, did, I was not very happy with a lot of the solutions for real holding that people have. Because for instance, you use ball bearings and the rim of the, of the spool rides on it. Well, I have cardboard spools and I want them to last longer. And a lot of the middle bearing spool holders, they, they tend to have like very steep flanges and they require threads to hold them together and you have to screw them together. Well, I wanted to go the opposite route where it just handles a, a, a narrower range of sizes, f for instance, from five centimeters to six centimeter holes. And you have these two plugs that go together. Look at that. So you have these two halves, both with bearings in the middle that, that go in either side of the spool. Now, I've printed them at a very low layer height, so they're very rough, and they, they just pop right in. And I think it's a much simpler solution that uses less plastic. And it also makes me think maybe I could use this for a universal joint. But I've already printed three. I'm hoping to make the rest of the unit out of wood, because wood is pretty easy. And I'll have just a metal bar going from a piece of wood. So I can have a spool over here and a spool over here. So I can serve as both three printers at the same time. But unfortunately, the rod that I thought I had that fit it is just a little bit too big. And the next rod that I also happen to find in the road is a little bit too small. So, I mean, it will be fine, but I want to find a rod that is actually the right size. I can have like the six millimeters or whatever. So I'll have to go hunting for that. But yeah, for these, they just fit right in. Hmm, that was not fitting. <laughs> that might be an issue. It was fitting before. Huh. Do they need to have... Oh, that one fits. Well then, what's the issue? Why so slippery? I don't know, weird. Makes me doubt my entire design. We'll, we'll edit that out. I'm glad this didn't fall on the table or on the floor yet, or did it? No. Oh, okay. Cool. Oh, it was almost done. This is almost no plastic. And I ran to the makerspace and I got this wood to make the stand.
at me. Wow, it just will not go in. That is so weird. Okay, I kind of hate this little thing. Like, why does it do that? I don't know if I'll be able to figure out why it, it's being held up, but I kind of don't care. Yeah, I was thinking of something kind of like that. Uh, now I wonder if it'll it'll work with the original car uh, cardboard spools that I made it for. I didn't have that plastic one before. Oh yeah, that looks pretty good. Tape is all it needed. It just needed because the, this, this plastic is just a little bit too weird and slippery on other plastic. Maybe I'll 3D print a handle for it, but I think that I can see about using that for the future, for whatever cabinet I come up with. I'll do the display model. Seems to work pretty well. Funny, it sticks to the cardboard really well. This one just needs some tape. But overall, it seems to use a bit less plastic than needed. Well, that's pretty much, well, that's all the energy I have for this. I'm gonna have to let this sit for a bit. And we're going to have to find a place to put these permanently. For instance, in the, the foyer or a closet or something like, something like that. And then we can see, will this actually run them? I could see having the two printers kind of up higher and this a bit lower. And then one feeds to one and the other one feeds directly up. But either way, I really like how this holds it now. And if it were to fail... It'll just ride on the bar. It's not a super big deal. But I just wanted something where 
it wasn't pulling too much and it didn't have a chance to really go too far. So yeah. Maybe I'll put felt on the bottom of it. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I thank you very much for watching. Have happy 3D printing experimenting. So yeah, I don't know how to do the outro. I'm tired.